I was making a huge mistake with my ideal clients and I didn't realize I was making it and it was affecting the way I was growing my audience and certainly the number of clients I was able to enroll each month. And then one day I had this light bulb moment and I was able to kind of flip the way I was viewing my ideal clients. And that had a huge impact. It made it easier for me to grow an audience of people who actually were interested in buying my service. And that in turn, of course, meant I was getting more leads and more clients each month. So today I wanna to chat to you about what this revelation was um, and hopefully it's gonna give you a light bulb moment too. So I'm Colette Broomhead, I'm a business coach. I work with introvert service providers who are selling a high ticket service and I help them to enroll consistent clients each month. And today I'm gonna to chat to you about ideal clients. So I'm gonna start off by just chatting at first about some of the common mistakes I see people making and that I was making myself um, when it comes to the research we do around our ideal clients and how we actually describe who our ideal clients are. So whenever I have a call with a potential client or someone new, someone booking a, a, a call in, in my calendar, um, one of the first questions I ask is for them to tell me who their ideal clients are. And nine times out of 10, I get a response uh, that gives me an idea of who they are, but is really far too broad. Um, it's too generic. And that is something that happens an awful lot. So that's something to definitely check with your own business. Am I am I being a bit too broad? So the example that I always give here is this example of tired mums. So I work with a lot of mum business owners and they often have a client who is um, how they would describe as a tired mum. And, you know, their service in some way is going to help them, you know, get more energy. You know, maybe they're a fitness coach or a nutritionist or something like that. And they're going to help these mums to, you know, feel more energized. Now, the problem with speaking about, you know, helping tired mums and referring to your ideal client as tired mums is that it is such a broad term, right? You show me a mum who at some point would not describe herself as tired um, because I'm not sure one exists, right? We all feel tired at one point or another. Um, are we ready to invest in support um, with that tiredness? Not necessarily. So that's the first mistake I see happening. The second mistake I see happening a lot is focusing on describing what your ideal clients need, right? Rather than what they want. Now, there's a huge difference in these two things, or often, oftentimes there is. And so um, this is what often happens, you know, when you're the expert in your subject, um, when you are passionate about a certain area, you've done a bunch of research, you know, you've perhaps got qualifications in that area, and, so like you really know that your ideal clients need X, Y, Z. <clears throat> and so you refer to them as people who need this and who want this. Whereas in actual fact, they don't know that yet. Um, and they think they need something else and they think they want something else. And so the kind of two messages just, just don't mesh and don't match. Um, so this often happens um, where, you know, uh, where I see people who are perhaps coaches um, and they know that the people that they work with, you know, need to do the inner work. They need to, um, you know, um, kind of really look inside and, and understand what's going on and, you know, start with the inner work. Now, their ideal clients don't necessarily know this. Their ideal clients may be sitting there thinking, I'm just really unhappy right now or I, I just have lost my confidence right now and I just want to get my confidence back. Whereas the coach that can actually help them with this, rather than saying, I'm going to help you get your confidence back, they're saying, I'm going to help you do the inner work. And the two don't work, right? So that's another thing that I, I often see happening. Now, what happens when we are too broad and when we are perhaps sort of speaking to the slightly um, mismatched outcomes? You know, we're speaking to the, the how maybe rather than the, the, the overall result that our ideal client is looking for. Um, is that we struggle to um, be really compelling in our messaging and we struggling we struggle to find people who are more than just interested like we might attract people into our audience who are interested in that subject matter who who are like oh yeah you know I'd like to hear more about this but we're not necessarily going to be attracting the people who are 
um, experiencing the problem that we solve to the extent where they're ready to invest. You know, if I'm a tired mum and I see someone online kind of go, hey, I help tired mums, I'll be like, oh, that sounds interesting. You know, maybe I'll join that Facebook group. Maybe I'll sign up for that freebie that they're offering. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean I'm at the point in my tiredness where I'm going to go, hey, do you know what? I need to invest high ticket in support with this. So what you'll find is, you know, as someone do making these mistakes, you're attracting people to your audience and that feels great. But actually, when you put an offer out, um, it, it often is going to fall flat. And, you you know, I hear people talking about, oh, I, you know, I'm attracting freebie hunters and, and this, that and the other. The truth is... It's not that they're freebie hunters. It's just that they're not your ideal clients because you haven't properly qualified who your ideal clients are. So let's talk now about this, this light bulb moment I had, this revelation that I hope is going to help you as well to really do a better job of qualifying who your ideal clients are and start attracting the people who are actually interested and ready um, to buy your service. So... What was this light bulb moment? Well, essentially, it was that I need to be attracting people who are ready to invest. So rather than thinking, who are the people who are struggling with this problem? I needed to, to just tweak that very slightly and start thinking, who are the people who are experiencing this problem to the extent where they are ready to invest in a solution? Because that is a huge difference, right? Um, there is a huge difference between um, being tired um, and, you know, a tired mum, going back to my example, and being a mum who is experiencing tiredness to the extent where they feel the need to go and invest in a solution to that tiredness. Um, you know, so as a business owner, as, as, a, as a service provider, you need to be able to differentiate between the person for whom your, your service is just a nice to have or, you know, maybe a bit interesting. Um, and then the person for whom this is, a, I need this now. Um, I need to take action. This problem is, you know, affecting me to the extent where I need to take action now. And when you can do that, then you can start to attract the right people to your audience who are actually going to buy your service. So I hope this has been helpful. As always, if it has, do give the video a like. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. Um, I'm posting new videos every day, Monday to Friday. Um, and I'm always interested in your comments and your thoughts. Do you agree with what I said? So make sure you leave me a comment below as well. Have a great day. I'll see you soon.